So I had artificial intelligence go over the different arguments when it came down to Chronosen and all the other apparently cheating devices. This entire thing is done in podcast format and none of it is real. Listen up. Ever been in a match, you're holding your own, maybe even feeling pretty good about your skills, and then bam, you're getting absolutely mm -hmm. wrecked. Yeah. And it just makes you wonder, like, is this person really good? Right. Or is there something a little, you know, dot off? Ah, the age old question in gaming. Skill or something else. Exactly. And that something else is what we're diving into today. Mm -hmm. We're talking about those gaming accessories, the ones that kind of blur the line between clever customization and straight up cheating. Where tech ethics get really interesting, yeah. We've got some notes here. They've got some eye-opening examples. And even this YouTube video transcript we found, people are fired up about this stuff. Well, and it's a bigger deal than you might think. That video actually mentioned like 600,000 people are using just one of these devices, the Chronosen. 600,000. Say, that's wild to me. So this isn't some niche thing of few hardcore gamers in their basement. Yeah. This is impacting how a lot of people experience games. Big time. And the ethics of it all, that goes way beyond just gaming, too. Okay, so let's get into it. Had some examples that honestly surprised me. Modded controllers, for one. Mm -hmm. Like, you can actually get controllers with rapid-fire triggers, turbo buttons, all that built in. Yeah, it's pretty wild. How is that even allowed? Well, think about it. Rapid-fire, it basically bypasses you needing to hit a button over and over, right? Right. Huge advantage in games where speed matters. But, and here's the thing, the article also mentioned gamers with disabilities. Okay. For them, those mods can be about accessibility. Someone with limited mobility, rapidly pressing buttons might be really tough. These mods can actually help level the playing field. So what sounds like cheating at a glance could actually be a tool for inclusivity. Exactly. That's a twist I wasn't expecting. Shows you how a device, what it's intended for, and how it's used D, two different things. Okay, next up, and I'll be honest, this one just sounds shady from the name alone. <sighs> Lag switches. Yeah, universally hated. So basically, it's messing with someone's internet connection to give yourself an advantage. Pretty much. It's a device or even software that intentionally disrupts your connection. But how does that even work? Like, what's going on behind the scenes? So online games, they rely on constant communication, right? Information going back and forth between players in the game server. Okay. Lag switches, they create delays in that flow. So your opponents, they might see your character freeze up or teleport around, while for you, everything seems fine. So you're basically causing a traffic jam on purpose. That's one way to put it. Makes it super frustrating for everyone else. No kidding. Okay, this next one is straight out of a spy movie. Yeah. Screen peekers. There are actually ways to see more of the game than you're supposed to. Believe it or not, yeah. Ow. Think ultra-wide monitors. They give you a way wider field of view than a standard one. Sneaky. Or, and this is more for a local multiplayer, devices that actually let you peek at your opponent's screen, even if it's just for a second. So it's not even just about skill at that point. It's about having more information. Information advantage. Huge in gaming. But also think about the real world. Insider trading in the stock market, same principle. Wow. So again, Seems subtle in a game, but it's actually tapping into this bigger idea about fairness and access to information. This is getting deep. Right. At what point does having more info become inherently unfair? Okay, before we go full philosophy on this, let's talk about aim assist. Isn't this where the whole PC versus console debate comes in? Big time. Because PC gamers, they're usually using a mouse and keyboard, which is super percentage for aiming. But consoles, you're stuck with a controller. Joysticks, yeah. So aim assist, supposed to help bridge that gap a little. Gives console players a bit more accuracy. Right. But then you've got devices like this XM Apex thing that takes it a step further. Right? Yep. XM Apex lets you use a mouse and keyboard on a console. So you're getting that PC precision, but playing against people using controllers. So like, what's even the point? If you're going to go that far, why not just play on PC? That's what a lot of people argue. Is it leveling the playing field or creating a new disadvantage for those who stick with controllers? It's like bringing, I don't know, a tank to a knife fight or something. Right. Shows you how fair play, that definition, can change depending on the game, the platform, who you ask. Hey, speaking of this whole debate about fairness, uh -huh. we got to talk about the device that's causing a stir. Mm. The Cronus Zen. This YouTube video we found they really go in depth. What's interesting is the guy who made it, he doesn't see it as black and white, you know, purely cheating or not. Yeah, they actually talk about it being part of their mission statement, 
to make gaming more accessible. Exactly. They say the Cronus, it can help gamers with disabilities or just customize their setup for comfort, even get a little edge, but they admit it can be used to cheat. So it's not the device itself, it's the intent of the person using it. That seems to be their argument, yeah. But it does make you think, if small enhancements are okay, where's the line? What about macros on a gaming mouse, for example? Macros. I'm lost again. Basically, it's a custom command, lets you do a complex action in the game, but with just one button press. So instead of hitting like five buttons perfectly, you just hit one and the game does the rest. Exactly. Saves time, effort, but are you really mastering the game at that point or just letting your gear do it for you? Hmm, that's a good point. Okay, listener, we're throwing a lot at you here, but we want to know, what stands out to you so far? Have you seen any of this in your own WN Gaming? Because this stuff, it's only getting more common as tech gets better. And it's not even just gaming, is it? This whole idea of what's considered fair when tech is involved, we see it everywhere. Everywhere. Think about online learning, taking tests. Some students, they've got way better tech, faster internet. Is that fair? It's like we've stumbled onto this whole other conversation. Yeah. But before we go too far down that road. Makes you think, huh? It does. And it's funny you mentioned that. It's like this whole debate about AI and writing now. Like, is using Grammarly cheating? Or is it just, you know, helping you write better? Right. Where's the line? It used to be so clear cut what was cheating. But now, with all this tech... We're having to rewrite the rule book as we go. Totally. And that rule book might need constant revisions at this rate. Okay, before we really go off on a tangent here, let's get back to gaming for a sec. You mentioned macros earlier. And I gotta be honest, I'm still a little fuzzy on how those work. Sure. So, think about it this way. You're playing, say, a fighting game. And there's that one combo, you gotta hit the buttons perfectly, super fast. I know that feeling. A macro, you basically program that sequence onto one button. So instead of me fumbling through five buttons, I just hit one, and it's like instant pro combo. Pretty much. Saves you time, makes you look good. But is it really you mastering the game, or is it the gear doing the heavy lifting? Hmm. It's like the difference between, I don't know, Actually learning an instrument versus using auto-tune? There you go. One takes practice, the other's all about manipulating the tech to sound good. And this debate, it's not just games. Music, art, writing, anywhere, tech's changing how we do things. It's like tech is this moving target, you know. Just when you think you've got a handle on the rules, something new pops up and throws everything out of whack. And that's why it's so important to be talking about it. The ethics of it all. Not just in gaming, but in life. For sure. All right, listener, we want to know. Yeah. Have you been in a situation where you felt like someone was using tech to get an unfair advantage, maybe in a game, or you suspected a classmate was using AI to write their essays? It's about your experiences, your perspective, because that's what shapes how we handle this whole tech evolution, right? Absolutely. Now, before we move on, I want to circle back to the Krona Zen for a second. This YouTuber we mentioned, he made an interesting point. He said that for some people, the Cronus is actually about leveling the playing field. Mm -hmm. not tilting it in their favor. Right. He talked about gamers with disabilities. For them, the Cronus can help them overcome physical limitations. Yeah, he even told this story about one gamer. They had limited mobility in their hands, but they were able to use the Cronus to play their favorite first-person shooter. And they were good, too. It really challenges that assumption that NAY tech enhancement is automatically unfair. Totally. It's all about context, right? Exactly. What might be cheating for one person could be a game changer for someone else. And having empathy for the different ways people experience gaming. Okay, but this whole thing about ethical dilemmas, it goes way beyond just gaming, right? Uh. I mean, think about something like facial recognition tech that law enforcement uses. Is it a useful tool for catching criminals or does it risk bias and discrimination? There's no easy answer, is there? But it's a conversation we have to have as a society. Totally, and that's just one example. Technology is making us confront these huge questions about fairness, privacy, security. And it's not going to get any simpler. Okay, listener, we've thrown a lot at you this episode. Yeah. Lag switches, AI essays. We want to know, where do you draw the line between fair play and just straight up using tech to your advantage? It's only going to get more complicated, right, as tech keeps evolving. Oh, for sure. Like, it's not slowing down anytime soon. If anything, it's speeding up. Exactly. And that's why these conversations are so important in NOW. we got to figure out some ethical guidelines before things get even crazier. It's like we're building the plane while we're flying it, you know? Perfect analogy. Constantly adjusting course, figuring it out as we go. No instruction manual for this stuff. Not yet, at least. Maybe that's on us, you know? 
As a society, we got to write the rules as we go. And speaking of rules and games, it makes me think about that whole information advantage thing again. It's like that saying, knowledge is power. Totally. And in games, that knowledge comes from all over. Your skills, experience, even just knowing how the game works. Right, but then there's that gray area where tech gets involved, like those screen peaking devices. That's not just knowledge. Nope, that's giving yourself an unfair edge. Info your opponent doesn't have access to. Like peeking at someone's cards in poker. Exactly. Ruins the whole point of the game. Makes you wonder, where does the line go? When does information advantage stop being smart strategy and become, like, full-blown cheating? Tough question. And no easy answers. But something we got to keep in mind, especially now, right? With all this big data, AI, there's so much information out there, it's overwhelming. And that means more potential for abuse, for sure. Like anything else, tech itself isn't good or bad. Mm -hmm. It's how we use it, right? 100%. It's about personal responsibility, the choices we make, and thinking about how they affect other people. Okay, listener, last thought experiment for you before we wrap up. Mm -hmm. Imagine you're designing a game. How do you make sure it's fair when people can use all this tech to enhance their gameplay? Right. Do you ban certain devices outright? Or do you try to balance it out some other way? Maybe different game modes for different setups? That's what game devs are dealing with right now. Yeah. No easy solution. But it's a conversation worth having, and it goes way beyond just games. It really does. It's about what kind of digital world we want. You mm -hmm. know, Does tech bring us together or tear us apart? And that future, we're all building it together, mm -hmm. and it starts with talking about this stuff. So Well said. We've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. From modded controllers to AI ethics, it's been wild. It has. But one thing's for sure. This conversation, it ain't over. Oh, we're just getting started. So, listener, we want your thoughts. Head over to the website, social media. Tell us about your experiences. What do you think? Give us your insights, your solutions to these tech dilemmas. Because at the end of the day, it's about having these open conversations, being thoughtful. That's how we navigate this whole digital age thing. Make it fun. Keep it fair. Exactly. Until next time, keep those conversations going. So what did you guys think? Honestly, it felt like they brought up some good points on both sides. I was surprised. But if you guys like this type of stuff, let me know, and I'll show you how you can do this for yourself, or I'll get back to the regular content. Keep it zen out there.